So this cake has been chilling in the refrigerator for about three hours. It's completely firm. I'm just measuring the cake now so I can get the dimensions. So here I'm rubbing my rolling pin with vegetable shortening before I roll out the fondant. So this mat was not letting me live. I have another mat that doesn't move, but I messed it up. So I have to use this one. It keeps slipping, so bear with me because it just would not let me get my life. You see me putting in elbow grease. You got to make sure you get it as flat and even as possible. So here I'm just using a ruler to measure out the fondant, just making sure it's the right length and width. So I'm actually measuring out the top of the cake plus the two sides because it's actually going to be one long panel. So I use the lines on my mat because they actually give you measurements and I also use it to get straight lines, but somehow I still came out with a crooked line. <laughs> It'll be okay. I'll fix it. So now we end up with one straight panel that's going to go across the whole cake. So I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on the bottom of my board so I can stick the cardboard to the actual cake drum. So like I said, I'm going to use this panel to go across the whole cake from one side to the other. Some people panel their cake using each section. They panel it separately, like basically measuring out the top, then the sides separately. But I find this way to be easier because you can do three sides at once. Winning! So now I'm just using my smoother to make sure that the fondant is sticking to the buttercream and just making sure it's nice and firm and that my edges are nice and straight. So I actually put the cake in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes so that the fondant can set up. 
And now I'm just using like a scalpel type tool. I got it from like a medical supply store. It's like a doctor's scalpel um, to cut the excess fondant from the edges because I find that when it's cold and firm that it cuts a lot easier and cleaner. So now I'm rolling out a, another piece of fondant smaller than the first one and I'm going to make the two panels for the two additional sides that we haven't covered yet. Again, we just rolling out the fondant, trying to get it as even as possible on all sides. You want your panels to be like the same thickness all around. So now I'm just using my ruler to measure out the fondant again. We're going to measure out two panels that are four inches by eight inches. And now we're going to apply the panels to the two remaining sides. So now we're using our fondant smoother to apply a little pressure to the cake to make sure the panels are nice and smooth. Again, this cake is very cold between each step. I've been putting it back in the refrigerator and letting it firm up.
So now I've taken it back out of the fridge and I've also already trimmed off the XX fondant from the last two panels. So these are just like one and a half inch panels that I rolled out with the orange fondant and I'm just gonna apply them around the top of the box to look like the cover. So now I'm just gonna continue going around to the four sides, applying the panels to each side and trimming off any excess. And I'm applying this with piping gel. I also added a piece of orange ribbon to the bottom of the cake just to clean up the bottom of the cake, make it look a lot cleaner. It's almost the same color, but it works. didn't even realize that I actually sat the scissors down on top of the purple panel which put a dent in it. So now it's back out of the fridge. Like I said, I put it back in the fridge after every step, letting it firm up. And now I'm going to apply the edible image to the top, which is just a image that I found on Google. You can Google Tory Burch uh, orange pattern or something, and the images will come up. You just make sure that the image is nice and clear and you don't actually screenshot it you have to actually download it and save it so that you can get the best actual quality and so yeah that's what i did with that and again i'm just applying piping gel here so i can stick the actual image to the cake So now I'm putting the purple panels that I actually rolled out. They're actually the exact same width as the orange panels that I pre-made. And I'm just going to go across the cake in like a cross pattern to simulate the ribbon for the bow.
And I know this video is going fast, so if you have any questions or you want to know any additional details, just comment in the section below, ask me anything you want, and I'll be sure to answer it for you. So now this panel is going to go in the opposite direction, like I said, simulating like the ribbon on a gift. So this is a Tory Burch logo that I found online. I literally just printed it on some scrap paper and I already knew how big I wanted it. I wanted it to be about two inches. So I just literally printed it out on regular paper and now I'm gonna cut out um, one of the T's. You literally only have to cut out one of the T's because they're both exactly the same and the exact same size. So just use the one cut out and make two of them. Don't make more work for yourself. So this is where you're going to make the circle that actually goes around the two T's. And I'm using two cookie cutters and one that actually fits in the other. It makes like maybe a quarter of an inch of a circle. Um, but yeah, this is how you make it without actually having to buy the actual Tory Burch logo maker or mold or anything like that. So now I'm just using my little scalpel tool to trace the Tory Burch T that I cut out already. And I like to use this tool because it's very sharp and very precise. So it gives you a really clean cut and you can do really intricate um, designs. So I'm just using my tool to clean it up. I'm going to put the image back on top of it so I can just make sure it's very clean and that it matches the picture perfectly. Again, I'm going to make two of these to complete the logo. So now these are the two T's that I made and then the circle, as you can see, I'm just pouring a little bit of vodka into my gold luster dust and I'm going to paint the logo gold now. So I'm just making sure to get between all the little cracks and crevices, make sure I cover up all of the orange so you don't see any orange from any angle. Get it nice and blingy. Yes. See, told you we didn't need no mold. Save your coin. 
Again, we back with our purple fondant and now I'm just rubbing it down with a little bit of vegetable shortening before I roll it out. And we're going to make the bow to go on top of the box. We're almost there. Stick with me guys, we're almost there. Again, me with the crooked lines. I'm going to get it together. I promise. So now I'm just tearing some pieces of wax paper. I'm gonna roll them up and they're actually going to go inside the loops of the bow and that's what is actually gonna give them that puffy look while they sit out and dry. You can also do this with paper towel or tissue paper. So now I'm rolling out a thin layer or like a thin strip of the purple fondant and this is going to be the middle strip that goes over the center of the bow. And now we just stuck the center piece over the middle of the bow and that will complete the bow. Again, it's stuck with piping gel. And here's our bow, guys. How cute is that? We're almost there, almost at the finish line. Okay, so this is our bow, our logo. I made a little name banner and little tails for the bow as well. So now we're gonna add the tails to the bow and then we're gonna add the bow. And then the last thing we'll add will be the logo and the little name tag and we'll be done. And you can notice that I actually went in and added a little thin border around, a little thin orange border around the top just to cover up the edges of the edible image and kind of clean up our square. Again, if you have any questions, you have any comments, just ask in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer them. And you see how poofy the bow is? It's because we stuck that wax paper in there while it dry and I actually let that bow dry overnight. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it broke. It's okay, it's okay, we are gonna fix it, we are gonna fix it. Don't panic, don't panic, we got this, we got this. Trust me, we're gonna fix it. See girl, I told you, I told you, we got this, we got this.
And now we're going to place the two T's in the middle, one facing up and one facing down, just like the Tory Burch logo. We had a little crack right there too, but it's okay. We fixed it. We fixed it. You can stop holding your breath now. We good. We good. Nobody will ever know. We good. And again, for the 2011 time, we stick in all of this down with piping gel. Just a little bit, just a little, a little dab of do you. Don't do too much, sis. And this is our final product. Yes, isn't she gorgeous? Like, <laughs> yes, bad and bougie. All the other cakes are jealous of her because she's just that fly. <laughs> sweet life. Sweet life, sweet life.